Hey everyone, in this episode I'm going to show you how to use dynamic modules to create reusable production ready code. You can see an example of it here where we have a module with a, for, a static for root method where we're passing in our configuration from the global app module level. This is fantastic for code reuse and it's a, an abstraction that I use not just for Stripe but across basically any kind of third party code that I use. If you're new to Nest, I highly recommend checking out the docs on modules in addition to this video since this is a bit more of an advanced topic than just how Nest is normally used. Before I dive in, I just want to explain briefly how this is going to work. Um, normally you would use something like this at module decorator to configure your modules, but in our case we're not going to use that. We're instead going to be use, using what's called a dynamic module and this lets us pass values into a function and then we return the module setup um, from that function. This allows us to do something like pass in an environment variable in one project or a string reference in another project. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I've already created a project called dynamic modules. If you need to create one, you can just do nest new app name, replacing app name with whatever you want your app to be. You can also use an existing project. It really doesn't matter. First thing we want to do though is install Stripe. And then we're going to create a module called Stripe as well. So nest GMO for module, we'll call it Stripe. And then if we open up our source Stripe, Stripe.module, we can see that we now have our Stripe module here. And so for this video, we're not going to be messing around with the app module decorator. We are instead going to be using the dynamic module interface. So the first thing we need to do is add a static for root method. For root is just a convention that is often used in nest projects. You can really name this whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. And we're going to set the return type to dyna dynamic module. So we'll go ahead and it's expecting us to return a dynamic module. And so for this, the only required property is module. So we can go ahead and set this equal to Stripe module. So generally when you're creating a dynamic module, this module uh, reference here should almost always be whatever class you're putting the static method on. Um, there's no need to really use anything else. Um, so the next thing that we want to do is we'll need to set up and configure Stripe. So let's go ahead and we'll do const Stripe. We'll set it equal to a new Stripe. And I'm just going to hit enter here and it should auto import. If it doesn't for you, go ahead and type this out. We'll open up our parentheses and it needs an API key and it needs a configuration object. So for API key, I'm going to use a, va a variable that we haven't created yet called API key, and I'll use config as the variable that we haven't created yet for the configuration object. And so what we're going to do is pass these into the for root method. And so we'll say API key here, and that is of course going to be a string. And then config, well, this is going to be equal to stripe dot stripe, whoops, stripe config. Big. Great. Save that up. Compiler is happy. And if we actually just take a quick look, we can see that our config here is the same type as this. So that is all good. We have our Stripe object now, but we haven't told Nest what to do with it. We haven't even told Nest about it yet. So to do that, we're going to use providers and we're also going to use an exports array to let the entire app know that, hey, you can use Stripe if you need to use it. So first things first, we will say const Stripe providers, sorry, Stripe provider. And this is going to be equal to um, an object of type provider. And so we'll open up our curlies here and we're going to say when someone wants us to provide the Stripe client, we are going to use the value of Stripe. So again, when someone wants us to provide Stripe client, so this is going to be a string that'll be used, we're going to use the value of Stripe. And so now we have our Stripe provider here. Let's go ahead and tell Nest about it. 
So inside of the providers array, we are going to add Stripe provider, make sure it's inside of an array. And then we're going to make it available to other mod modules by using the exports array. Same thing, make sure it's in an array and put your Stripe provider in there. Save it up. Now there's one last property we need to add here, and this is really a convenience for us. This is global true. And what this is going to do is it's going to mean that whenever, when we import it, so we import Stripe module up here, we only need to import it once and it's going to make it globally available. So it's going to make these exports globally available. Now, if we head back to our app module, we can see that we're not actually using our for root method. Right now, we're just using this at module decorator configuration. So let's change that. Inside of app.module, we will call our for root here and we need to pass it an API key and a configuration. This is the beauty of using dynamic modules. Um, this this uh, Stripe module here could be imported into 50 different projects and you could have 50 different ways of passing the API key. In one, it might be your API key passed as a string. In another, you might use process.env.stripe key. And in yet another, you might actually use some kind of API call or a file on the file system. It doesn't matter. This is why we're using a dynamic module here. So for us, what I'm going to do is just simply use process.env.stripe key. I'll show you how to set that up in a second, but we also need to pass in our configuration object. So we'll pop that open and Stripe in TypeScript requires at least the API version. So we'll go ahead and add that. If you open up your quotes, it should um, show this 2020-08-27, uh, which we can just click, and then we'll save it up. So now we have our Stripe module being configured, but we haven't set up our API key yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So copy this value here, head on over to your terminal. I'll just clear this. And the syntax is export and we will do stripe key and we will set it equal to value. Now, just a quick note, I'm using WSL um, Ubuntu. This also works on Mac, but it will not work on Windows. So if you're on Windows, you'll need to use whatever um, methods are available to you there. And you can also, uh, if it's just for testing purposes, just hard code it directly in here, your API key. Just be warned, um, you definitely don't wanna commit this to your repo. So before you commit anything or push anything um, to GitHub or Git or whatever, make sure you replace it with the appropriate um, environment reference or file reference. Anyways, I'm going to set my property off camera, so I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I've just set my property here. You should set yours as well to whatever your Stripe secret key is, and then you just hit enter. So I've already done it, so I'm not going to hit enter. Um, but that should be all set up now. And so if we head over, let's just sanity check everything in our terminal and do npm run start dev. I just wanna make sure that the dev server is actually working and that, um, there we go. So our, our app module starts up and we have everything working. However, we don't have a way to actually see that we're connected to Stripe right now. And so the way that I'm gonna show you how to do this is just a quick little, um, I'm gonna create a quick module uh, just for testing purposes. And so I'm gonna create a customer's module as if I'm implementing some sort of customer's API, and then we'll go from there. So we'll do nest gmo for module, and we'll call this module customers. I'm also gonna create a controller really quick. So nest gco customers, co is controller. And just a really quick tip here, if you generate your modules before you generate your controllers or services or anything, your module will automatically have whatever you generate after. So I generated my controller after, and so my controller gets added into my module automatically by the CLI. So if you're going to create a full, like a service or something, or a controller here and there, this is a great way to do it in order. Now. Let's pop open our customer's controller and take a look at how we can add in our Stripe instance. So 
what we want to do is have some kind of method where we can call slash customers and let's get a list of customers. So let's go ahead and try that right now. So we'll do at get for a get and we'll just do slash to denote that it is the base endpoint of our controller that we're going to use. And we'll call this list customers. Whoops. Open and close and then open up our curlies. So in this method, we are going to return some list of customers or at least the, the uh, result of an API called a Stripe. However, we don't have Stripe yet. If we haven't injected Stripe into our controller, it's nowhere to be found. So let's just review how to actually do that quick. If we head over to our Stripe module, we can see we have this string reference. Now, I don't want this string reference to be used anywhere outside of this module. So before we even add Stripe to our customers controller, I'm going to get rid of this. So we will create a new file called constants.ts. And inside of this file, let's just export that string. So we'll do export const Stripe client. And this is, of course, going to be equal to that um, Stripe client string. Save it up, go back to Stripe module, and we will replace this now with Stripe client. And we can save that as well. So now what we are saying is that when someone wants us to provide this constant value, we'll use the value of Stripe. Perfect. Now we're ready to actually start injecting it. So let's create a constructor so that we can uh, inject Stripe open up the parentheses, and we will use the at inject decorator. And so if you haven't used this before, it is a parameter decorator that takes in a token. So in our case, our token is Stripe client, so we'll import that as well. And then we'll just set this as normal. So private Stripe is Stripe. And then make sure to open and close those curlies and make sure that you also import Stripe and save it all up. So now we have our Stripe here. We are saying, hey, inject our Stripe. So right, provide me with Stripe. And if we go back over to our Stripe module, you can see that we're saying, hey, when someone wants to be provided with the Stripe client, use this value. And so if we head back over, we are saying, hey, give me whatever is the Stripe client and we'll put it into the variable Stripe. So now we have our Stripe. Let's go ahead and use it. So we'll say return this dot Stripe dot customers dot list won't pass any parameters. Um, this is just a demonstration to show that everything's working. And let's go ahead and open our terminal and start up our dev server. So npm run start dev. All right, this is all up and running. Okay, and now if we open up our Chrome and type in localhost colon 3000 slash customers and hit enter. We should now get a list of customers from the Stripe API. And you can see I have one here to test. Uh, my first customer, spoiler, it's me. So there you have it. If we check out our app module, we have this nice clean for root method where we can pass in our Stripe key and any additional configuration. Um, if we actually just take a look, we can see we have all these different configuration options that might be different project to project. And so with this pattern, this is something that you can reuse across many different uh, third party libraries or many different um, libraries that you want to create an offer. Uh, it's a fantastic pattern if you're getting into code reuse. I mean, for example, I can just type in secret here. And now rather than using my environment variables, I'm just using a string reference and it gives people the power to kind of configure their application the way that they want. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, make sure to like and subscribe and leave me a comment if you have any suggestions for future videos. Thank you. Have a great day.